When I was first approached to do the opening sequence for Frankie and Blunderland, I'd read the script and it was bizarre. I was sure it was good, but I wasn't really sure what it was. The opening sequence wasn't done, I think Caleb was still waiting on the animation. So there wasn't any picture to guide the music at all. But he did mention that he wanted something like the plugs did in Repo Man. So what I got was this eerie Latin surf vibe with what I think are Mellotron sounds. So I ended up making something I don't think sounds anything like the plugs, but it has the same sort of feeling. Um, and I must have done something right because then Caleb asked me to do the rest of the film. And as far as that goes, I stuck with the surf sound, but um, lots of other influences sort of seeped in, like um, tape manipulations, synthesizers, experimental type stuff, and handwritten uh, scores, strange arrangements, and things like that. One of the great things about working on this project is there wasn't a really strict rubric on how it needed to be done. Other than the opening sequence, I work with a rough edit. I compose to a rough edit. But I would also just compose songs that were inspired by just what I was seeing, what I was seeing on screen and what was, what was happening in the script. And then I would just send them to Caleb and say, here's something, maybe you can use it. And then I would also just compose for whatever reason. There was something that happened. Like, for example, I was at this party at my, my friend's house, and uh, he fell down the stairs, these flight of wooden stairs, and ripped his ear off on the banister. And uh, so I went home and wrote a song called Dan's Ear, and that's now featured in the hotel scene. I'm an artist. I sit in my room and think all day. Look for the hobo. He might know. My education in making music is like this. I once asked a coked out old jazz pianist how he did it. This guy was like Igor Stravinsky in the middle, middle of some cheesy jazz tune. I worked as a cook at this bar and the sole point of the music was to loosen the pockets of drunk tourists. And I always liked this guy because he made those tourists wince. And even the guys who were playing with him weren't sure what to do. So anyway, he blew me away. I asked this guy, how do you do it? And he said, music is just sounds. And then he went to the bathroom and did more coke. But I had that attitude. The attitude, you know, if it sounds cool, then it's right. There's no way I could have ignored Los Angeles while composing the music for this film. that Frankie and Katie live in, in the movie, was our house. When I say our house, I mean the band I was in at the time, not the government. And I don't need to tell you that there wasn't much set design necessary. We lived that way. And I think a lot of the reason I like this movie is because I can relate to it. And that might say something about how crazy I am, but I think it more speaks to the story and Caleb's directing. and performed all the music for the score. Count Smokula performed with me on the end credits. I love your personalities and all your depravity and everything that makes you tick. Every time I see a bet you're walking by, something inside me comes alive. What Caleb told me what he was looking for in the way of the end credits piece is sort of a, a quirky, losing your shit type vibe with a romantic twist. I immediately thought of Count Smokula because I... There can't be another person that's better for that sort of thing. Uh, so I called him up. He showed up at the uh, basement studio wearing this flowing uh, Hawaiian print kind of t-shirt. Pulled out his accordion and the lyrics and chords that I'd sent him and um, laid down the accordion track and the, the great vocal track. Every time I see you in your crazy eyes, something inside me comes alive. I really love your baby, no two ways about it, you completely and utterly insane. I also had the pleasure of working with one of the most talented guys I've met named Victor Salinas. 
he was absolutely instrumental in the outcome. He was the engineer and producer for the, for the whole thing. And um, he, he, the guy just understands music. I would come up with something, you know, trying to explain what's in my head, and I'm sure it just sounded like garbled nonsense, but he, he got it and he figured out how to make these things happen. Um, we recorded the whole thing in the basement of his house in Highland Park, uh, which was an adventure in itself. Uh, I remember one time I showed up and I was told to watch out for rats, or uh, the rat, maybe there was just one rat, but, and then when you walk around the studio you kind of have to hunch over and, uh, and under the low and slanting ceiling, but it was, it was all in all a great experience to work with him. Mm -hmm.